Hi, Juliet. Thank you so much for your question. I appreciate your heart and desire as a pastor to make sure that your church is rooted in a biblical understanding of reconciliation. So I really commend you and thank you that you realize that the theme and the value of reconciliation and multi-ethnic ministry is not a sidebar, but is central to who we understand God to be. And so I want to answer your question with the best scriptures for me that I I've used over the years to make a case that reconciliation is rooted in the heart of God. The first thing I'd say is that it's important that this be demonstrated as a value and a theme in both the Old and the New Testament. So let's begin at the beginning. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 and 28 really says that all people are created in the image of God and as such as image bearers of who the divine God is, we were called to leave and fill the earth and to bring bring all things under the reign of God. That's our human vocation. And as we were to leave and fill the earth, the human family would migrate. They create culture. And so the creation of culture is a part of the mandate that comes out of Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. And then I would go to Genesis chapter 11, where we talk about the Tower of Babel. That is the text that was used in South Africa to justify apartheid. That's not what God intended. Ended. And so I really want to say with all my heart, we've got to be careful about our theology because bad theology leads to bad sociology and bad sociology kills people. And so I've come to truly believe that the work we do as preachers and pastors is critical because what we believe about God tells us what we believe about people and what we believe about people tells us what kind of society we believe we're trying to create. So Genesis chapter 11 then moves to Genesis chapter 12. That's where Abraham is called to be the father of many nations. And his purpose in being blessed is so that all the families of the earth will be blessed. It's important for us to establish that God wants all human beings to flourish. I wouldn't leave the Old Testament without looking at the book of Esther the whole book of Esther, but particularly chapter four, because it basically says that Esther, like the church, may not want to get involved in the social and political issues of our day, but there are times that we are called to speak up and stand up for such a time as this. And so now let's go to the New Testament. John chapter four is my absolute favorite text when it comes to talking about reconciliation and the practical principles of what that looks like. Jesus is our role model. And so if I wanted to put in a shameless plug for my book, I write about it in a book called A Credible Witness. You'll be able to get much more out of the book than I can do in this answer. But know that I believe that Jesus is our role model in John chapter four and very specific practical principles are laid out in that text. And then I would go to Ephesians chapter two, one of my absolute favorite texts. And that's because in Ephesians two, it's just plain that Jesus has destroyed anything that divides us, no hostility that separates us. It's been abolished through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. One family that's united with God, Jesus our brother as the cornerstone. And then I would go on to the book of Acts. The book of Acts is rich with a conversation about multi-ethnicity. You can almost pick anywhere in Acts where the birth of the church takes place. And in Acts chapter 2, it's very clear that it was always from the beginning intended to be a diverse, multi multilingual, multinational group of people who worship God together. The book of Acts is a huge resource for the value of reconciliation. There are so many places where God really says we're not to show partiality and multi-ethnicity is blessed by God. And then I would end in Revelation chapter seven, verse nine. We've got to give people a vision of what we're calling them to. And that's what we're doing when we preach about reconciliation. We are prophetic preachers and prophetic preachers do two things. So says Walter Brueggemann, the great theologian. He says that we criticize the status quo and we energize the imagination. Show them that one day the kingdom of God is coming and give them a perfect picture of what that kingdom looks like. It's made up of people of every tribe and every nation and every language group. 
every culture reflecting the glory of God the way it was intended in the beginning. And I pray that your church will get excited as you cast that vision for them. I hope that's helpful. Thanks so much for your question. Hi, I'm Dr. Brenda Salter McNeil, but you can just call me Dr. B. Thanks so much for coming by my YouTube channel and checking out what I have to say about diversity as it relates to race and gender. So if you'd like to be a part of this reconciliation conversation, subscribe by clicking below. I'd love to have you join us. If you'd like to be a part of this conversation about race and gender and reconciliation, do it again. Subscribe by clicking the link below. Here, it comes. <laughs> Here we go. Woo, woo, woo. One, two, three. Subscribe and come again. Oh, okay. <laughs> click here. Let's. This is my last one. Okay. Click the link below. Okay. <laughs> Subscribe by clicking the link below. <laughs>